no offense, but like when you kind of back up, it looks like, it looks really cool from here. We just need molding. We're gonna be putting a tiny little ledge on top here. Well, we've arrived at the bus and kind of realized it's a mess in here. It's an absolute disaster. So we're gonna do a quick cleanup and then we have a fun surprise for you guys today. We'll check back in with you guys when things are looking a little more situated. We're Sean and Ash, and for the past year, we've been turning this 27-foot school bus into our first home, on wheels, that is. We demoed the whole thing and got a little creative at some points. As we near the end of this tiny home build, we're so excited to share our journey with you on our travels around the Americas. Subscribe and come along for the ride. Hey, we're Sean and Ash. We thought we'd give you guys a little different taste this week. First thing I want to let you guys know, if you don't already follow us on Instagram, at Sean Nash, we are doing a giveaway this week. Um, we just announced it yesterday. We're giving away Sean's three favorite tools. So the first one is this chisel. The one that we have is slightly different. You've probably seen it in a bunch of our videos if you followed our journey so far. These were amazing to take down rivets in the ceiling and the walls, like this and a hammer. Nothing works better. Old Faithful. You're about to hit demo, which is something that we'll be talking about in today's video. This could be yours. If not, it's at Home Depot. Something else that we're giving away is a multimeter. Multimeter. Um, this is my favorite tool for taking electrical measurements. Essential, very important tool to have if you're doing electrical on the bus. So. I actually broke our last one. I think I, you threw it. No, I stepped on it. My accident. Oh, I thought you threw it at the wall. No, it was on the ground and I threw something out of the bus and it like smashed the glass. Last but not least, Charm's giveaway is this grinder. If you're building a bus, you need a grinder. Yeah. So. You guys can just head over to Instagram and follow us at Sean and Ash and make sure that you are subscribed to us as well for the giveaway. So for today's video, we wanted to talk a little bit about things that you might wanna know before you start building a school bus. Things that we kind of wish we knew. And for the most part, that's gonna be the order in which you go ahead and build everything. Right, so again, we're not professionals here. I've never built a home. Ashley's never built a house. Her dad's gotten close. The order that we come up with still might not be the right move for you, but in our experience, what would have worked best for us and what makes the most sense is what we're gonna lay out. Being prepared and knowing what you wanna do and the way in which you wanna do it are really essential to making sure that you don't overspend or buy unnecessary things or kind of waste your time. And I would say that all of this layout applies to a van conversion. We've obviously never done that before, but I would assume that they're along the same lines also brings us to kind of a place that we wanted to address we kind of want to start talking a little bit more about getting into schoolie life we're just giving it a shot so we want to share with you what we know as we go so that you can have maybe the best chance at building your bus you know we don't live in our bus yet so it feels weird to speak on this a little bit. we're just giving you our experience the first thing that we'll start out with is demo Demo is probably the worst part. Yeah. I think we're far enough along now that we can say that it's been the worst part. I'll be honest, demo is more, um, it's a physical grind. You know what, this tool here, it's just bam, bam with a hammer all day. Your hands are shaking at the end of the day. Your forearms are twice as big. That's the, that's the bonus. So let's do one thing, safety tools for demo. Wear your ear protection, okay? Because there's gonna be a lot of banging, there's gonna be a lot of screwing, cutting with saws. Eye protection is most important. I don't know if we'll keep this in here, but I had a friend who a piece of metal got into his eye and he's never been the same. Demo is pretty much gonna be taking the seats out, taking the floor up, taking the ceiling panels off, and taking the side walls off. Now, you don't have to do that. We know a few bus conversions where they didn't do that. The issue with not taking those things down is you don't know what's behind them. Taking it out gives you the chance to better insulate the bus. It's a lot of work, that whole section. If you look under your chassis and there's no rust and the subfloor is in good shape, you're probably okay. Doesn't Ashley look just divine in this lighting? Get out of my league. 
Shut up. Mm -hmm. I always feel that way about you. <laughs> Creating your layout. This is an awesome next step. Yeah. Picture your bus empty. There's no seats in it anymore. All the metal, all the junk's gone. That's when you kind of get to say, what do I want it to look like? And the reason that we say you should do it this early on is because depending on where things go inside your bus, that's going to affect where things go outside your bus. Take into account where you have space under the bus. You know, some people, they keep their water tanks inside. We have a smaller bus, so we had the opportunity to utilize these two huge spaces in the back. They were honestly the Underneath. perfect size. Yeah, it, it was almost like it meant, was, yeah. meant for it. And the same thing for our storage box. We had space underneath the bus. You want to know where you have wires coming out of the wall. You want to know where the water is going to come up. So first steps. First steps meaning, I can't even read what I have here. Imagine once again, you have this clean slate of a bus. Maybe your layout's done. This is your chance to decide if you're doing anything special with your bus. That means doing a roof raise. We put a giant truck topper on our school bus as a mini roof raise. Just in our kitchen area, the whole bus is higher, about a foot and a half almost. Okay. It's awesome, like we can't even touch it. Does the truck topper leak? It did. I was losing my mind. I'd go up there and I'd find a couple different spots that I'd hit and eventually we figured it out. If you haven't yet heard and you're thinking about buying a school bus, there is such thing as a roof raise. You pretty much cut the bus in half and then build in these metal beams between it, kind of crank and raise the bus up so that it's like a foot or two feet higher, but you can get rid of your windows, put sheet metal, mm. cut holes in it and put like RV windows in. So some people do that. We personally liked the look of having all of the original windows. So that's what we went with. So structural and structural components. Before even framing, I think it is so crucial to waterproof the bus. Like get a power washer, just look around. Where's their water coming in? What we did was waterproof each window that had a leak. We should have done is taken every single window out clean we did do that we took every window out yeah wow i didn't i didn't realize where that where were you i guess i was sleeping this is also a good place to address the existing bus electrical wire there's all of these crazy wires around the bus and most of them you don't need anymore so you can either tuck them away or you can do what Sean did and go crazy and like yank them all out. I'll do it. So advice don't just... touch the wires. <laughs> just leave them there. Like they're all gonna be nicely kept in Why do conduit. You keep doing this? I don't know, it's kinda weird, huh? They're all in this conduit and it's all taped together. Just leave it there. It looks so pretty. And it's nice. If you need to find wires, just go to the end of the conduit and cut it and go from the box. Another thing is if you have the access to have someone help you because it took me like three months to figure out the electrical. And in that time, I cut a lot of wires. I made my job a lot harder for us. I don't want to say I didn't, I didn't tell you to touch it, but I did tell you don't touch it. Yeah, but in the end, I now understand what's going on and I can run my own wires if needed. <laughs> Next is electrical. We were so excited to finish. It's essential if you want to have anything powered on the bus while the bus is off. Solar power is a great way to do that. You can use a generator as well, but it's a little bit louder. Just do your research. Make sure your layout is set up, your 12 volt and your 110 volt if you end up having an inverter. Follow code that you would if you were putting it in a regular residential house. There's so many different components to the electrical system and it's kind of hard to find like a resource all in one. So we're gonna eventually put something together that kind of consolidates all of that. One day, speaking from experience, it all just clicks. You need to have an idea of all of the appliances you'll be powering, how much solar power you need, and then how many batteries you need to store that power to charge and work your appliances. In the end, when you figure all that out, you're then gonna go and install the wires into the walls, into the bus, like you would a house. So we recommend doing that first. Right. After you get all of your wires run to where they need to go, then you're gonna wanna insulate. And there's mm. a bunch of different ways to do that. Right, so waterproof, frame, electrical, insulate. Nice. Different ways to insulate. You could just use rigid board. That's kind of what we did. We did that for the ceiling. It's very flexible. You can score it and make so it can um, mold to the circumference of the bus. Or 
I think the best option is to spray foam the entire bus. Hire someone to do it or uh, rent a kit and do it yourself. And then you have to go in and cut all the excess out. It's gonna give you the highest R value. However, I have heard some people complain about their spray foam, mainly because the spray foam has a lot of these chemicals in it that actually cause it to expand and all this. So when you're living with it, you know, only a quarter inch wall between you and this toxic. Mm. Do the hard stuff first. I would say water tanks do first, storage boxes, anything structural. We mounted two 75 gallon water tanks. One is for fresh water, one is for gray water. We installed a self-built cage that we're using to mount two propane tanks. And then along with a friend who's a welder, we were able to build this huge storage box that was then mounted to the underside of the bus as well so that we have access for side storage. The water tanks and the storage box were bolted through the beams on the bottom of the bus, but they were also welded a little bit as well. Because again, we wanna have this thing forever, so. Roof plans. Up on the roof, you're gonna wanna get your Henry's Tropical. I would say every bus converter probably uses this on their roof. It's a silicone based paint that helps with any leaks. Keep in mind though that once you put Henry's up there, you cannot paint or attach anything. Like silicone won't stick on top of it, like paint won't stick. So like Henry's is the last thing that goes on your roof. The only thing that'll stick is Henry's. Maybe you're doing a roof deck. That's something that we did. It made it a lot easier to safely install these huge 300 watt <laughs> solar panels that's that we really have. Huge, yeah. Um, plumbing. Plumbing. Plumbing's plumbing. fun. It's very easy to plumb these days. Now, we don't know if there's leaks in our system because we haven't tested it yet, but if you buy PEX, I mean, it's it's literally... It's a two-part click. So it goes... And then it goes... The second one, the one, the second... That's the one you want. Like a monkey can do it. So whether it's your van, your school, your RV, you have a couple different options with the water. Everyone's going to need fresh water. That's how you would water running to your sinks and technically you do need running water in your schoolie to be considered an rv on the road so that is a requirement it's like we said we have the two 75 gallon ones so we can fill up with 75 gallons of water and then that's what we have when we're out we're out or we could go park at an rv park or a campsite and we can directly hook into a line and they have pressurized water that whenever I turn faucet or go to shower, the water is pressurized and it actually bypasses the pump that you would install. And the accumulator. It would go straight to your shower or whatever. <laughs> Walls, ceiling, and ceiling. Turning it into a tiny home. Once all of your systems are taken care of, your plumbing, your solar, your propane, which is something we're not really gonna touch on because you really know a lot about it yet. This is kind of the point that everything's framed out and it's ready to be covered up. So there's a lot of different ways to do your ceiling. A lot of people do like just strips next to each other. We did probably the hardest way possible and that was to bend giant sheets of like four by eight foot plywood. If we were to do this over again- It could have worked Ashley, though. And Ashley didn't have a say. This is the place that we're at now. So I would like to say that we've made it through the woods on this build. We're kind of through all those systems we just talked about. We're at the point where we're just trying to cover everything up in plywood and get right. it to look really cool inside. We still have a lot left. We have a lot of appliances to install. Our stove, sink, our mini wood stove, our AC. With just one more thing with the ceiling, furring strips. Just wherever you can put furring strips, put furring strips because you want to have things to screw into, nail into. I feel like the purpose of this is just to make information more accessible to people who want to try this lifestyle. I think the biggest reason someone might feel hesitant to just jumping in is because they can't access the information that they might want about it. Your first thought is probably, what do I do? How much is it gonna cost? Like, what are the steps? So these are the steps. We'll go into some other things as well. For those who have been following along in our journey, I hope that this is like a good recap for you of what we've accomplished so far, because we're feeling pretty good about it. Yeah. And if you're new to our channel, this is what we're doing. This is what we've done so far. And if you're thinking about building a schoolie or a van, just do it. There's too many unused vehicles, spaces in this world to not make tiny homes out of. I do, we just like love tiny homes, so. Be super curious. And I get to spend every day with the love of my life, so. Aww. It's been the best decision I've ever made. How about you?
Thank you guys for watching. Make sure that you're subscribed to our channel. Go follow us on Instagram and enter our giveaway. We're gonna be giving away Sean's favorite tools. But we hope that you found us if you're new to Bus Life. Leave us a question below if you have any other specific details you wanna know about or if there's any other topics that you would want us to cover. See you guys next week. Peace.